Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for His goodness. Thank God for what He's doing and what He's continuing to do in all your all's lives and in mine. And uh, I'm thankful, Dad, that I can stand up here and I can say with an honest heart that I'm grateful to be standing here. I'm thankful that He called me. I used to not be able to say that. And not that I still enjoy getting up here, but um, Amen. I'm honored that he would choose me, Dad, that he would call me. And I guess the title tonight would be, Who Do You Think You Are? <laughs> and you could kind of take that two ways, depending on which word you emphasize. But let's emphasize the word think. So this is how it's going to go. Who do you think you are? Um, when dad was preaching, I think it was, you were up, was that Sunday night? Thursday. Or what is today? Thursday. Thursday night. Whenever you were up last. I heard the spirit say, who, who are you? Who are you? And I've been thinking about that. And um, if you go with me to Proverbs Chapter 23, we'll start there. i got a couple of places to read. Just pray for me because I want His will to be done. My words won't, won't help you, but His words will. And that's all I want to do is to share what He's given me. And I think if you take this to heart, you will be different. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. And when I get there, I'll read it to you. Verse 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And you know, I hear that a lot. I think you quoted it. And that's kind of what prompted this. Um, as a man thinks in his heart, is the way some translations say it. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And, you know, if we read this scripture in the context, it, we realize it's it's... Cautioning us to use wisdom and discernment in who we fellowship with. The he in this scripture, or the he that this scripture speaks of, is the ruler mentioned in verse 1. He may say with a smile, eat and drink, but in his heart he's hoping that you eat very little because he's the one funding this spread. <laughs> You've seen him. You're like, oh yeah, go ahead. Have all you want. Don't eat too much. I don't want to have to pray for all that. So in the context of that, you know, he's hoping that you're not going to eat a whole lot. But for the sake of this message, I want to apply this verse to all of us because it does apply to all of us. We've all likely done just as that ruler in this proverb did and spoken one thing from our lips. All the while in our hearts are different sort of words. Amen. I'm the only one that's done that, right? <laughs> Everybody's done that, right? Which one do you think truly counts? What I say with my lips or what's really in my heart? Proverbs 4, 23 tells us to keep our hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Jesus tells us to love God with all our heart. So I'm going to say it's what's in our heart that really counts. I may say I'm not afraid to go skydiving, but when it comes to actually jump out of that plane, my heart might have a few other words like, Hey, if God wanted you to fly, he'd have given you wings. Sit down. But it's what's in your heart. Amen. That, the, the core of our being that really matters, Dad. Oftentimes, we say, I believe, or I love you. But our actions say it otherwise. Our actions are what our heart prompts. Our heart prompts our actions. We can say something different up here. I believe, I love, I want, whatever. But if your heart is not behind it, if it doesn't line up with your what's in your heart, what's truly in your heart, like that ruler in Proverbs, he said, drink and be merry. But in his heart, he's saying, don't eat too much. That's going to be a big bill. He's going to have to pay for it. So that being said, who do you think you are? Not up here, but in here. Because according to that proverb, whatever you think in here, that's what you are. 
Does that make sense? I can say I'm a marathon runner, but in my heart, I know better. (laughs) I know I couldn't run a half mile right now without falling over. Is this making sense? I'll go on here. Um, so in your heart of hearts, do you truly believe yourself to be a child of the Most High God? Or do you just say it because that's what everybody else says? When you're all by yourself and it's just you and God, do you truly believe that He hears you? Do you cast all your cares on Him like Peter says to do? Because you know He cares for you. Or do we, like Matthew said last Sunday morning, and just whisper a prayer not fully believing that God even hears us. I think he read to you in James the prayer about um, prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And in that verse above it, that a prayer of faith, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. If I pray without believing, what good is it? And this is what we're truly getting, trying to get over tonight. I truly believe God is desiring to use this little group of people to do great things in these last days. But we've got to lay aside the Gideon mentality. What's the Gideon mentality? What did Gideon say to God when God called him? And the angel, the angel of the Lord even said, what did he call him? Mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Mighty man of valor. Something like that. And Gideon's like, who, me? <laughs> I'm the least of my, my tribe. I'm the youngest. I'm the, I'm the I'm not the strongest. I'm not a mighty warrior. What do we do? What do we, we do the exact same thing? And I remember one night sitting about where Hannah was and Dee was up here doing something and she looks at me and she said, "Don't a message. You got to lose that Gideon mentality." Is what she said. I'll never forget that. And we don't realize how much of us have that. We immediately start to ask why start to question God when he tells us to do something. Well, why God? Why me? I'm not, I'm not capable. I'm not, I don't have a degree. I don't have this. I don't have that. Some of us are wired for negativity. That's the first thing that pops into our heads. This may be easier for some people than others. Me coming from a negative background where I, you know, I just immediately thought the worst used to, I don't much anymore. I have thankfully married a positive person. They say opposites attract. So (laughs) he's positive and I was negative and now he's had a good effect on me. I hope I've had a good effect on him, but I don't want to make him more negative. But anyway, that's another story. I'm grateful that God works with us. And however you think of yourself in, in your heart, in your heart of hearts, that's what you'll be. So God's trying to tell us what's he been speaking all through the revivals ever since the first of the year. Jen told us at night watch, believe and obey. That's simple. Should be. But I get it. I, I felt what Devin was saying that one night, you know, he says, I believe that you can pray for somebody and they'll be healed. But when it's me, I'm, I'm a little more like, oh, what if this doesn't work? What are they going to think of me? What are they going to think? What are they going to think? Well, me, exactly. It's about me. We make it about ourselves instead of making it about God and just saying, yes, Lord. Don't question. He's trying to get this cross to us, Dad, and me included, because I still struggle. I'm telling you, I still struggle at times with it to just, God, who am I to be assistant pastor? Who am I to preach your word? Better be careful, Hadn't I? Asking such questions. But when we were born again, what does Scripture say? That all things were made new. The old passed away. So why not lean into that newness? You're not that old, um, bashful, backward person you used to be. God brought you out of it, didn't he? You're not that... um, quiet person who never says anything to anybody we you can still be quiet and actually god says he likes a quiet spirit you know that's a great prize to him but that's my point is this 
that you're not what you're not what you were. Amen. When you were born again, you were made new. Amen. You were made into the likeness of Jesus. Amen. And what did Jesus do? What was what did he say his meat was to do? The will of the Father. Will of the Father. Shouldn't that be my desire? To do the will of the Father. So God is wanting us to get a hold of this. Because I was thinking about it when Sister Arpy was up one night. And she said something about a tool. I think she's talking about digging the wells or something. But I was thinking about it. If I've got all these tools in this toolbox. And I'm not real mechanically inclined. I'll do okay. I mean, I can put some stuff together and. I know what a screwdriver is, and I know what a flathead is, and the Phillips, you know, four-way, and I know what a, you know, a hammer, and, and that's about it. <laughs> Would you get past that? I don't know. But if we have all these tools in this toolbox, but what good's it do us if we don't know how to use it? And that's what she was trying to t- tell us so with her faith. We've got to use that faith. And what is faith? It's believing what you can't see. Faith is simply believing what you can't see. And God has given us tons of promises. Are you reading it? Are you studying it and writing it on the tables of your heart? So that when troubles do come, you don't immediately pull that negative button and go, that panic button that I heard somebody preach about before. But you're, you're in the Word. You're not panicking. Or, or like uh, Tina said the other night, tapping out. I like that. She's, she's not tapping out. You're standing firm on what God has said. But God said, though the enemy comes in like a flood, he is my shield. He'll raise up a standard. That's his word. I've got to know it. And I've got to write it on the tables of my heart. And I've got to believe it. I've got to believe what he says about me. So we got to stop limiting the hand of God with our doubt because he's wanting to do great things. And I'm talking, I'm preaching to myself here. (laughs) And it's not that I doubt God, doubt me. I I, want to say, but, 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 but we got to stop. Stop limiting the hand of God. Do you know you can? You can't stop his will. His will will be done. But you can limit the hand of God and the blessings in your life with your doubt and unbelief. The only time in the Gospels where Jesus didn't do many works was when he was in his own hometown. And Scripture says it was because of their unbelief. It wasn't that Jesus couldn't. It was that he wouldn't because they didn't believe. It's the same with us. Why should God answer our prayer if we only pray half believing like Matthew was talking about and we we barely believe that he hears us, let alone that he would actually answer? Why would he move on our prayers? Maybe you all, um, maybe maybe this was just for me. I'm sorry. Y'all got it down. (laughs) Maybe it is just for me. I don't know. But, you know, just uh, like Brother Devin said, I can believe Nikki can pray for it, but sometimes when it comes to me laying hands on somebody or or praying for a certain thing, it's like, well, I don't know. Do you hear me, God? Will God do this? We got to get to that place where we take him at his word, and he says that anything you ask in Jesus' name, faith believing in that name, he will do it. Amen? Amen. So why would he move on our prayers if we don't believe, Dad? Truly believe that he hears us because God takes pleasure in faith. Doesn't he? In fact, Hebrews 11, 6 says it's impossible to please God without it. Faith is believing in what you can't see. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. Dad was speaking about this the last time. I think it was Thursday night. Um, my days run together. 
But he was talking about a rest, that there's a rest for the saints of God, for the believers. Amen? I thought it was funny that I come across that, I posted on Facebook that little thing. If, you know, we say we believe Jesus is in control. I can't remember how it said it exactly, but it was in a book I was reading. And I just thought, I'm going to post this because it kind of went along with what, you know, we wouldn't be anxious and toiling all the time and worried that we're not measured up because we know he's done the work and we have that rest in him. But let's read chapter four, verses nine through 11. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Yeah. Let us labor, or you could say, let us make every effort to enter into that rest. I kind of find it funny. It kind of sounds contradictory, doesn't it? Work to enter into rest. But I truly believe that this means to have, to constantly guard on our hearts and fill it full and running over with his word so that no doubt or fear can even come close, Dad. And we can find that rest in the fact that Jesus did the work, the really hard part, when he said it is finished on the cross. That was it. That was the work. He lived the perfect life, sinless and blameless, and became my salvation. Amen. 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 So eternal life is already mine, and none of my good works, get this, listen, none of my good works could ever add an ounce of righteousness to his righteousness that that scripture says he gives me. All my work is, like dad says to you, is to believe Jesus is who he says he is. And then spend the rest of my whole life learning of him and getting to know him more. Amen. That's, it. That's it. That's the rest you got to find. That I'm not up one day and, and down the next. Oh God, you don't love me because this happened. Oh God. No. No. <laughs> Finding that rest, is it means you're coming into maturity. And what does the Bible say? That perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect is mature love. It's mature. How does anything mature? It don't just do it like that, does it? It takes time. It takes time. So it's important that you spend time with him, that you do as dad preached Thursday, that you take his, his yoke upon you. And learn of Jesus. Not try to put my yoke out there and say, hey, I got to get this done and I got to get that done. And 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 because I'm going to make a name for myself. No, it ain't about you. Jesus is the king of glory. You didn't die for anybody. He did. And that doesn't mean that you're not special. That you're not loved because that's the whole point of this message that who do you think you are? It matters who you think you are. You got to know who you are. You're not that old Matthew that once was. That was too bashful and shy to say anything to anybody. God has made you a new creature. And in him, I have the strength to do all things. Amen. That's his word. That's what I got to stand on. I got to get that in here so that it affects my actions. I can say it all day. I can say it all day and y'all can think I'm just on fire. But if it's not coming out of here, you'll know. You don't fool anybody. No. Not even these children. They know if you're on fire or if you're not or, or if you're for real, if you, what you say is true. People know, especially God knows. I can say I love you, but if I turn around and talk about you behind your back. It's questionable. What is in this heart will come out Amen. in your actions. Amen. And you've got to start believing who you are 
in him and whose you are. You belong to the God Almighty, to the great creator who numbered the stars and named them. He says he called them by name. How many are there? I can't count that high. I don't know about you. But he's named every one. And he knows the number of hairs on your head. And like Nikki was saying, I think it was Thursday night. I've, I've often thought that too about that scripture of the sparrows. And I, I really brought it to life when I was a kid. I remember every time I think of that scripture, it makes me think of that shooting that one off the fence post. I'm like, I'm sorry, Lord. And I went and buried it and never did it again. But the point is, God knew. <laughs> he knew when that sparrow fell. But then Jesus says, but you, Eddie Williams, are of more value than many sparrows. That's what we've got to get in our heart. Who do you think you are? It matters. Because your actions will, will tell on you. Amen. He wants to simply, for us to simply take him at his word, like we said, without question, without excuse, and with pure motives, not trying to make something of me, but to make much of him. Amen? Amen. And it's vitally important that you guard your heart and stay in constant communion with the Spirit of God. Amen. Check your motives. Are they sincere? Are they God-honoring Every, in everything that you do? Or is it all about to make, make a name for you? Or make, I, don't, I don't believe anybody in here is about out to make a name for themselves. But, you know, you got to be careful. You got to always be on guard because one little pat on the back. Oh, you did such a good job. And then you can go get the big head. And then God's got to come along and go and pop it. And that's no fun. But are your intentions, what are they? Are we like Jesus that? We just want to do the will of the Father. Amen. We want to please Him. It's not about me. We can't. We got to not make it about us. We got to know that know our value, but yet not know where He is. Keep Him on the throne. Does that make sense? Because honestly, I lived in that place for years where Satan kept me bound. That I was never going to be good enough. That I was never, I would never do enough. I would never be good enough. Whatever. He just, I was not it. You're not going to do it. That's what I heard all the time, day in and day out. And then only to realize I don't have to do anything. Jesus did it on the cross. I just have to believe and accept excuse me, accept what he's done. Amen. Because if I give you a gift and you don't take it, then what good's that gift? He's offered you the gift of salvation and you take it. And I love that line. And if, I'm hoping that everybody's seen that last episode of The Chosen, but <coughs> excuse me, the conversation between Tamar and Mary. And Tamar says, her, but says to Mary, but you've been, Jesus forgave you of so much, but you want to bring it back up again. Or you want to hold on to it, I think is how she said it. Don't we do that? Let it go. You can't do anything about the past. The past is in the past. Give it to God. Repent. Make things right. Go to whomever you wronged or whatever you feel you did wrong. Fix it. And then move forward. You can't always, if you're driving around looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to wreck. Just going to tell you. We got to keep moving forward, Dad. Keep pressing toward that mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm almost done, I promise. <clears throat> But do you check your motives? Do you check your heart every now and then? I, I need to. I do. I'm constantly saying, Lord, am, am I doing this for the right reasons? Is this just to honor you, not to make anything of me? Amen. Because I don't really, I really don't want to fool myself at the end. 
and go to church my entire life and serve the Lord since I was a kid only to hear him say, depart from me, I never knew you. I never knew you. God wants a relationship. That's it. He wants a relationship with you. And in Jesus, Jesus quotes the prophet Isaiah in Matthew 15. He says, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Is that you? I hope not. <coughs> and Jesus even called them hypocrites in that chapter. And in the Greek, the word hypocrite means actor. So the scribes and the Pharisees here were just putting on a show. <clears throat> they acted pious and religious, but their hearts weren't truly seeking after God. God desires relationship. And you got to know that. He wants you to be in fellowship with him constantly. So he can show you things. He says in Jeremiah that I, I want to show you things that you do not know. How cool is that? Amen. The God of the universe wants to show us things if we just give him the time and believe him. Because why would he show you anything if, if you don't believe he will? Don't you know that God says you're his beloved child? Read with me 1 John. And then I'm about to hush. I don't mean to bore you. But I hope I'm making a point. 1 John 3. I'm sorry, my voice. Just the first verse. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. How much love. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, Nikki, Amen. that he would send his only begotten Son Amen. to stand in my place, Amen. to stand in your place, to take the punishment for our sin, and then turn and hand us his robe of righteousness. Amen. That unfailing love, that amazing grace. Amen. There's nothing in this world like it. And God wants you to truly know who you are. You are a son or daughter of God. You are beloved. But you got to believe it in here. Otherwise, you won't act on it. I can say that. I can say I believe it, but if I don't truly, and I'm the only one that's going to know whether I believe it or not. You're the only one that's going to, unless God reveals it to somebody, <clears throat> that's between you and God. And like the man that said, that came to ask Jesus, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Ask him. If you struggle believing these things, help me, help me, God, to see myself as you see me, this new creature that you've crafted and created in, in your holiness. Help me to see myself that way. And he will. Might take some time, but he is wanting to unleash his power and his anointing on his people, on his remnant but if you don't know how to wield those tools and you don't know how to use them, and trust me, you won't if you're not going to be in fellowship with him. Amen. And he won't, he won't give you that power unless you are humbly submitted to his will. And he knows your heart. He knows it better than you and I do. And if we, did just, we would just humbly submit to God Almighty, what great and mighty things he, would, he wants to do through us. Amen. You are loved. 
You are treasured. You are of much value. But that's only going to go in your ear and out the other unless you catch it and believe it and hold on to it and put it in your heart. Who do you think that you are? It matters. It matters what you think, Jesse. Who do you think you are? Because from that, you will act either in faith or unbelief. If I know God's got my back and I know what his word says about me, then I'm going to walk in confidence and boldness. And I'm not going to be afraid to do what he's commanded me to do. But if I'm not so sure, well, I, I think he does. I think he loves me. That song says Jesus loves me. I'm going to be tentative and not so sure of myself. And what kind of salesman are you for Jesus? Nobody's going to want what you got. But if you're different, if you're different from the world, then people are going to notice. And they're going to they're going to sit up and take notice and they're going to wonder what's going on there. Cuz I knew Arnold before, but something's different now. What is that? Or I knew Jesse before, but she's different now. She's got this peace. She found that rest. She found that rest. Knowing that whatever comes my way, God's got me. Amen. What's in your heart tonight? Who do you think you are? Because it affects your walk. It truly affects your walk. <clears throat> and God says, I am chosen and adopted into his family. In, in Ephesians 1, 4, I think he says, before the foundation of the world, I was chosen. How cool is that? Amen. That the God of all creation Amen. would see me in 2023 and know exactly where I'd be. Amen. Same with you. He is a good God, and He only wants the best for you. And like a good father, you may not think it's the best at the time, <laughs> but that's where we got to trust Him. Just believe and obey. And watch what He does. Like Dad was saying Thursday night, I mean, we don't like to say try God, but, you know, give Him a chance. He does say, you know, taste and see that I'm good. Amen. Just believe him. His word is true and it doesn't, it doesn't change. And it won't go out void. It'll do what it's meant to do. Amen. So we just have to believe. I don't have to do the work. Amen. We just have to believe what he said and obey him. Amen. Amen. Let's find us a place to pray tonight.